We're sitting on 419 subs, so, you know, if you ever feel like you just want to blaze it in the Twitch chat, you could be sub number 420, which is one sub away. Thank you so much again, Jebatera, for those five months. Top right-hand side, our red Terran player. Give it up for Clem. Coming out with a swift 2-0 against Nurture earlier today. Pretty crazy game one, but a clean game two. And uh, seeing if he can also join, uh, join the players at the top of Group B. Euthermal currently there, undefeated so far in matches. Austin as well hasn't even dropped a map. So two of the Dutchies at the top. Clem looking to try and join them. Obviously, Hellraiser could join them up there as well if he wins both this series and this series against Raynal. So, yeah, so far, a lot of possibilities for today. Clem in the top right and Hellraiser, our boy from Clash, in the bottom left-hand side. There was a tournament with this sort of format that he almost surprised us all with last year in the Clash Invitational. And uh, he actually did very well in that tournament to uh, very nearly make the offline playoffs in a group that was just stacked to the rim of amazing European players. It was amazing that Hellraiser almost made it out just one best of five, one map away even, I think, from making it. It was absolutely crazy. So getting this set up, getting this Roland Reaper on the way out from Clem, Orbital Command dropping down, Nexus and the Cybernetics core building up as well here from Hellraiser. It's just getting this going very regular so far on New Repugnancy. As we get this set up. What's up, Diesel MP? Thank you so much for the 15 months subscribed. Thank you so very much indeed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do you appreciate it? Just love in the chat for Diesel, guys. A long time supporter of the stream. Oftentimes going above, going beyond. Thank you so much, dude. I really do appreciate it. Some love in the chat is. Do you see this probe? Pulling back down to the bottom left hand side, factory. He's about to, well, he's coming up to being about halfway done here from Clem. Is see the first supply depot going to drop down. Step going to finish up. And again, just Twilight Council tech already being made, so. Kyle Razor deciding what he wants to go into here. Yeah, nice fast Twilight again. We saw Harston with a Twilight this fast earlier, using it for DTs. Reaper baits the Adept to the bottom, can turn around and checks the pylon. And sees the twilight. So good information for Clem here. Knows the opening structure. Takes away some of the options, of course, and some of what he has to prepare against. And he's going into Hellions here early on. Obviously, if you go into Blink, you know, with the twilight in general, nothing really comes out of this for a minute and a half or so. So you're not really going to be able to be, you know, Clem's under no immediate threat of like an immortal Corona boosting out and so on. And also, you are just going to be seeing this Reaper escaping out the front. Resonating Glaive is going to be the choice from Hellraiser. Definitely very different. Not the blink you're used to seeing. So this will typically turn into a very aggressive game. And we're just going to be seeing probes mining away on the natural. And again, the Reaper looking for an opening. But the Adept is pretty good at repositioning here. Hellraiser pulling it around and is going to be able to bring it across and pretty much get that Adept in position to shut those couple of... Uh, well, shut that Reaper down. But now the Hellion's showing up. Still only the Adept here. The other Adept on the high ground. So... Italians already found four or five worker kills. Quite a lot of damage done actually by Clem right away here. That's six workers killed. Not bad at all as this Hellion will get out through the front. So Clem moving it out down to the bottom side of the map now. A couple of these adepts coming over from Hellraiser. And again, Resonating players just continuing through. Extra gateways going to finish up in the next few moments. Another adept building. The thing is, of course, I mean, you've got to see these adepts, and Clem has to sort of say, well, you know what, you're making adepts and not stalkers, so that might be the beginning of a telltale sign that this is obviously something a little bit different, a little bit funky here. Siege tank starts up from Clem, a couple more marines, and then Starport as well is about to drop the uh, tech lab down, so Starport dropping the tech lab, and just going to be seeing the stalkers on the way out at the moment from Hellraiser. Stalkers coming through. I mean, again, Glaive's about to finish these first adepts and moving across, but just, it feels like more of a PvZ opening than a PvT one, right? Because it doesn't feel like these adepts should really be able to get too much done. That said, there's only a few marines in this bunker because the rest of them, or well, the rest of the units here, are Widow Mines dropping across the map, and Hellraiser does not respond. These other couple of Widow Mines are a bit late to burrow. That's going to be up to 15, well, 14 workers killed. This Widow Mine doesn't connect. Thought he was going to get one more kill. It goes into the gas, though. Well, Adepts, though, up into the main base, so actually Clem's going to have some problems dealing with this. I mean, these Adepts are going to start getting some damage done as well. This Orbital Command taking quite a few shots. The Starport here 
Taking a bit of damage as well. Another barracks. Taking a few more hits. So SCP is being denied at the moment. Marines. Sonic come forward. Tank going to unsiege and start pressing up to the top side into the main base as well. Tank will siege up. The Adept's going to jump forwards, but not finding any opportunity just yet to come into this. Looks like those Adepts are going to jump onto those Marines. He's going to continue running away. Tech Lab will drop down. Again, a bunch of these Adepts going to get picked off here. Oh, that tank's been absolute MVP at the moment, as we'll see that last Adept as well. Also going to fall. Nice cleanup in the end from Clem, but obviously both players taking a lot of damage. While Clem only lost seven SCVs, he was not mined for a lot longer than Hellraiser, who actually just kept mining no matter what. 21 probes from Hellraiser is actually pretty insane, by the way. But yeah, um... Yeah, Clem obviously took a little bit longer to clean it up. Now, coming out only one worker behind, I'd still say Clem's in a pretty decent spot here. Uh, definitely not a bad spot at all, is that blink on the way up from the Twilight Council in the main. Shield battery still uh, set up in this mineral line as well. Adept shading through the center of the map in this warp prism. Coming forwards to unload in the main base, try and get some damage done. Marine here from Clem coming through the top side, and again, just a couple of these Marines sat up in that bunker already. As the prism getting ready to unload, gonna get ready to pick away a few of these SCVs. So a few SCVs starting to go down. A couple of workers picked off here. And again, the war prism just going to be able to lift up a few of those adepts and escape away into that upper right-hand corner. And coming down and already kind of cornering these in here. The adepts cancel their shade to fight for a little while. I'm not mining, so again, a little couple of micro errors definitely cost him a little bit. The prison being a nuisance. You can see Stimpak plus one attack coming through as well. So Clem still building up into this bio. How raise these attacks definitely helping him get back into this a little bit. You can see that income advantage. How raise are dropping drastically when it comes to that income. Uh, to say dropping, but obviously dropping for him means it's dropping into his favor on this graph. So you can see how it drops into his favor a little while there. This combat shield's building up as well from Clem now. So 1-1. One, one. Uh, not 1-1, one, one, but plus one attack. We're going to see plus one armor on the other side of things, but already plus one attack done from Hellraiser. He's a bit of having upgrades. Blink finishing now as well. The Sork is coming across to kind of take their role in terms of developing the map control here and uh, applying some pressure. So here he goes. Stork is coming through. Already one Marine picked off here. Bunker trying to set up and is going to be able to come down. Stork has picked off a siege tank. And that's a dead Raven as well. That's a great pick off. Oh, huge pick off here by Hellraiser. Clem. Taking tons of damage, actually. I mean, that's huge losses. A siege tank, a raven, expensive losses, too. No value out of those gas-heavy units. That's absolutely crazy. So that really does cost quite a bit. He is now more prison loading a few of these adepts. Into the main base. More depth warping in as well. A couple of Widow Mine shots going off, but not really enough to clean up. But this is, again, seven, eight workers going down. So Hellraiser is already able to deal quite a bit of damage here. Ten workers killed. Bions want to stim on top of that medevac, but... Uh, sorry, not medevac, the war prism, and it will get it. These adepts will fall, but I mean, Stalker's over here as well. It's 19 workers killed. Clem has taken an insane amount of damage. Suddenly he's down 17 workers in total. And I mean, he does have a huge army supply, though. He has killed, obviously, all of those adepts. He's going to kill the majority of these Stalkers. So that's a pretty big deal. The fact that he's able to kill off a lot of those units. Storm here about to finish from Hellraiser. And those medevacs and marines still gathering up as well up on the top side. Scan drops down. How razor is army seen here. And here we go. Push across the map from Clem. Pushing across over to the far left hand side. Charge over halfway done now. As it continues to tick along for the moment. Plus one armor. The charge upgrade still coming through. Marines and marauder. Medivacs as well. All gathering up. I mean this is Clem's opportunity to get back in the game with a large push right now. Storm is done, but if you can dodge the storms and make something of a fight happen right here, Clem can absolutely bounce back a little bit because he does have an overwhelming army supply advantage, even if he is down in uh, armor upgrade. The Marauders stimming ahead of the rest. The Widow Mines, he obviously have a huge role to play. Tank in a good position as well. Why do you even throw the storms down? I don't know. Well, on top of those Marines is the obvious answer. Great split away from Clem, though. Minimizes storm damage so far. And this is a problem for Hellraiser. Seven probes lost in this Nexus is going to die, so he loses the third base. Meanwhile, Adepts are going to stim or shade into the natural and the third base of Clem across the map. Two shot in SCVs now because they have the plus one attack upgrade. SCV is surrounded to try and fight back. So Clem loses another 12 workers already. So the third base of Hellraiser has been felled. Well, this Marauder now picking its way through this pylon. That's going to take quite a bit of damage, too. 
Clement Burrow and those Willow Mines lifting a few of those up, taking them to the left hand side. Now coming down to the bottom here, a few Stalkers, High Templar and the Immortals still gathered up on this ramp. I'm already seeing these Marines coming through and ooh, big stall to begin with, first Marines taking a lot of damage. Pylon will go down here, scan, just to see what he's playing against and actually sees no Observer, he'll lift up the Medivax. Come down to the bottom side where Hellraiser is trying to re-establish a third base in a different location. Woodermines will connect big in this mineral line. 12 workers down and even saves three of the Woodermines that fired. I think it was actually only three that dropped in. So a real good drop here from Clem. Really dealing worker damage once again now. Dropping the main base too. Some more damage potential as Hellraiser is again out of position to deal with this. Clem is doing a great job of circumventing those High Templars. Staying away from any of the storms. A few reinforcements in the middle are a bit bruised and bad. It needs to be careful. And actually, very nearly loses this medevac. I don't know how he turned around with all those units. I would have been absolutely terrified to, but I guess that's what makes Clem a bit of a better player than me. Scan for the Observer. It goes down. Now he kills his own Widowmine, but Clem, he just wants to play hard mode. Doesn't want his Widowmines to have too much health. Otherwise, Hellraiser might be in too much trouble. Wants to stretch this game out a bit, apparently. As here you go again. Clem's army setting up down on the bottom side. This time it's a straight up attack into this third base. Now he has liberators here so you can zone out a lot of these units. Especially with the third base position, you get up this ramp, you zone out this area. You're just gonna struggle to come forward and that's a pretty high energy tempo that gets killed already. That's a nice pick off as it deaths back across the map once again. The war prism, a new one coming through. Lifts the depots but the adepts already heading straight towards the third base and they will get that shade off. His eight SCVs already go down. The High Templar taking shots from the Liberators here. Widow Mine's going off as well. The next High Templar is not able to connect and it's this Bioverse as well and Archon is the only real threat at the moment. A couple of Zelts turn around to charge on through but it's 1-1 versus 1-1 upgrades. The Zelts aren't even super duper tanky like you usually might see and Clem is once again going to find himself the ability to pick away at this third base. Zelts Still charging through here, another Widowmine shot going off, Storm drops down, more Zealots taking damage, Stork is taking hits as well. This is an absolutely crazy situation as the bio splits away one more time, Stalkers keep on going down, High Templars will fall also. This is crazy, I'm telling you, another Stalker drops, the last few units are going to be able to get this Nexus, surely they go for it as the Stalkers will not be here to defend, lifts up, gets out of there. Meanwhile across the map, Clem has been dealing with Adepts in his mineral line. 18 SCVs kill just faded from the left side of your screen, but there's only one Adept left now, and that Adept is dead. Clem survives yet again with a 46 to 51 worker count, but he's killed that third base, so all of these probes of Hellraiser are not mining effectively. So the income is definitely in Clem's favor, and if he can keep on trading not somewhat well, he should be okay here. You can see he's traded a lot better than Hellraiser so far. So mining more, which he's going to be doing now, is a huge deal, but he's going to maybe lose the third base. Those stalkers very nearly getting a kill. Didn't even realize that third base was almost burning down already. Clem with the repair is absolutely essential there as he will just not quite kill a stalker that blinks away through the top side. Ridiculous game of 62 SCVs and 43 probes downed in it so far at the 13 minute marker. We're going to be seeing only one war person died. I feel like we saw more than that single one that got stimmed under by Marines. Man, just can't believe that Raven and the tank went down. Imagine they were still alive earlier on here. The difference they could have made with anti armor missiles. The tank shots as well, obviously very good. Let me see this observer here from Hellraiser coming back around, uh, watching uh, Clem come back around to a bit of a different angle. Still no base here from Hellraiser, but he does have this Nexus about to complete on the bottom at least. Absolutely needs this to stay alive this time. He has new high tempers, he has new storms available. Clem has his Liberators coming across the map, but obviously not here just yet. Not sure Clem can really push up here at all, and he does back away. I'll tell you what, Clem has so many medevacs alive, he can definitely continue to drop happily while not also not having to really worry too much about building limbs. He definitely has enough medevacs for the rest of the game at the moment, so obviously at some point we'll probably lose a few, but so far so good as... Oh my god. That Zella got picked up and the Widow Mine still went off and killed the Marines that were running after the prison. Clem has the army supply. I have no fear at all for him right now as Hellraiser comes across through the center. There's a couple of libs joined up as well. More ghosts on the way out as well. So it's warping in over on his right hand side. War Prism gets shut down. We are going to be seeing those couple of Zealots going to continue dropping. Stalker's coming through. Orbital Command taking damage. Lipper is setting up. I mean, this third base in trouble actually. Let's see if he's running to try and repair it, but the Stalker Volley is good. Now Clem loses a third base. Well, Oh, good storm on the exit as well. Hits a lot of those bang units and another one. The EMP hits the couple of High Temple in the front, but not the ones in the back, uh, kind of, well, in the back for Clem. Clem already lifted up the main base orbital. I was about to say, well, the third base going down for Clem isn't that big a deal because he can replace it with the main orbital. 
Santa still holds quite an army supply lead at the moment. And as we are going to be seeing the Liberator's Ghost, Marines and Marauders pressing across to the bottom left hand side. Storm dodged actually pretty nice and there's a good EMP as well. Suddenly no storms available and Hellraiser. Wow, Hellraiser actually just has Stalkers. That's actually not that great. Yes, it's nice against the Liberators, but it's pretty much pure Marauder in this army of Clem with the Ghost support. So actually, oh, big EMP too. Well, those Ghosts are going to do well against the Zealots, and the Marauders are going to do great against the Stalkers. I just kind of feel that Clem is missing the splash damage in the tech units. He needs to really make this work. Obviously, as well, Hellraiser can't press too far forwards. Otherwise, Widowmines and Liberators are going to have the time of their lives. If the Stalkers blink in, the Widowmines blow them up. I mean, if they run forwards, they just get liberated down. There's no win in this at the moment for Hellraiser, who's backed into a corner. Funnily enough, it's his own third base that's great in that corner. Nexus under fire once again, some Stalkers in fire now of that Liberator's range, and that's GG. As Clem is going to pick up a game number one here on New Repotency. That was one hell of a game. I think that was probably the best game number one. He does spawn down in the bottom right-hand side. Could go 2-0, 4-0 in his first day, and in the group so far, this is Clem, our Red Terran. At the top left-hand side, our Blue Protoss. In Clash, we have got Hellraiser. So setting up into game number two. And this ready to roll. Clem is uh, absolutely going to set up. Guys, I don't understand these arguments in the chat. Someone says, well, you lost 80 SCVs. You still had more economy. He also killed like 60 probes and a third base. I mean, the problem is Hellraiser had his third base down for so much of the time when he was mining out of the main and natural. He had nowhere near the income he wanted, and he was also out of gas. So while he was making enough gamer units to support, he was never getting enough tech units up. And you kind of saw at the end, a massive stalkers is never going to win you the game against Liberated Ghosts and Marauders. This wasn't enough mining throughout for Hellraiser here, unfortunately. As he drops down that first game against Clem, and Clem looking great so far. Not this tournament. Great to see Clem continue to do well in these tournaments. He really, really is. Cybercore about halfway done. You can see this probe from Hellraiser moving out into the middle of the map. Stalker being Corona boosted out in the main base, Wolfgate building. Waiting for the tech choice here from Hellraiser. Already an SCV here though, so obviously doesn't really want that around when he puts his tech down, doesn't want to be seen for free. When does the match arena close? The match arena is going to be open for a good month or so yet while the tournament continues to take place over the next few weeks. Again, it's a long-term tournament, guys, so plenty of time to raise up that match arena money and so on. It would be awesome to keep on raising that up as much as possible. Robo facility dropping down here from Hellraiser. And we are going to be seeing that SCV from Clem come down to uh, the bottom right-hand side and... Let's see what else is going on. Command Center will finish up and Robo Facility coming through too. So yeah, Robo first from Hellraiser gives you a lot of versatility in terms of your build orders. Definitely a couple of uh, different options here in terms of being able to go into Worlds of War Prism for harassment, straight to an Immortal for a very aggressive push, or just the Observer for some information, right? And just setting up with kind of your units at home and just knowing what's kind of coming your way. We'll see, you know, it, it, it's again, it's versatile, whereas, you know, the Twilight Council, you know, it's mostly blink, right? I guess, you, you know, when you're Hellraiser, you do build up sometimes that, um, you know, you do build up the uh, the Resonant Glaze now and again and make it a little bit crazier, but that's really something I've not seen in the last hundred games of TVP I've casted, so. Robo gives you the most kind of choices, which you see five probes going down to the first Reaper and two Hellions. Nice damage done so far. That's not even one more worker going down in the main base. As Hellion finally falls, Twilight Council follow up is no surprise. It's just the War Prism initially with three gates. Hey, it's allows for quite a lot of pressure, and obviously Clem has to be very careful because the way that Hellraiser is setting up, I mean, there's going to be a lot of units coming into Clem's base, and Clem is not going to have much to really fight against it. 
That said, there's not going to be much to clean up these widow mines either, so pulling workers away properly is going to absolutely need to be very, very, uh, it's going to absolutely be, have to be something you have to be good at as Hellraiser, because you can't afford to lose too many workers to this. That's four stalkers. I mean, two marines in this bunker is not scary at all, but they are just going to avoid the bunker altogether, go into the main, and obviously just start hitting this production. War Prison will add in a few extra cells as well to buffer. Here comes that Widow Mine drop, and immediately Hellraiser does pull away, but it's going to deny mining for a little while as the first two probes go down. Drops into the main base as well. Meanwhile, Zelds and Stalkers fighting over here. Going for that Siege Shang, the Viking. Doing some good damage to the War Prism, though. Stalkers absolutely need to get rid of the Vi Viking. Uh, Viking's out of range, though, so now the War Prism is going to be in trouble. Only three probes lost, Hellraiser. Just the problem is he has to keep mining those, um, working with those probes as well, so he loses so much micro potential as he micros those probes away from the Widow Mines. Four probes lost. He kills 11 SCVs, but he also loses all of the Stalkers. He loses the War Prism. He loses a lot of his potential on the map. And Clem, he only lost a couple of Widow Mines. He still has two of them and the Medivac alive. So this is really kind of a battle of attention, right? You know, focus and attention is a resource in StarCraft 2. And Hellraiser would have been able to do so much more if Clem wasn't dropping at the same time. But in dealing with the Widow Mines correctly, it cost him the War Prism and the Stalkers. Well, that's a really good example of just how tough StarCraft can be in the multitasking department when something like that that can be game ending is going on back at home. And it's such a shame because you're in an amazing position on the other side. And what do you switch your attention to? Well, you just really have to split between them. And you really have to split between, you know, just split it up because otherwise you're just going to kind of lose in one department way too heavily. And I'm just going to be seeing the uh, extra Zards warping in. I mean, charge is about to be done. So how is going to go super aggressive here, by the way? There's another bunker builds up from Clem as part of this wall off, this tank from Clem presses forwards and as you see jump as the Zelda start running forwards. No SCVs around on that bunker to repair. SCVs will be pulled in to help survive this though. Another tank gets siege. SCVs starting to pull back a little bit now. Hold positioning to help protect the tanks. We'll try and repair this one as well, but it will go down. The tank friendly fire isn't exactly helping. And Hellraiser has so many zealots. He's able to wolf in so many a time. He's on six gateways. He's so super committed to the attack. And again, Clem is going to lose quite a lot of work because he's lost all of his marines. So there's only the siege tank here right now. The zealots are going to get a lot more SCVs by the time this is done. And that siege tank going down two more zealots warping in. Clem is in a world of trouble here now as the zealots keep charging forwards. More marines, more SCVs going down. The Vikings from Clem going to lift up, going to move away into the main base landing now to pick their way through those zealots as well. I mean, it's just the wall off that's really saving Clem at the moment. And oh my god, Alvarez doesn't even finish it off. Wants to save some of those zealots. 16 SCVs killed. Crazy stuff here. Stimpak on the way up from Clem as a follow-up. There's more Marines trying to replace those uh, SCVs. Oh, well, that's actually a dead War Prism. So that's a nice catch. But Clem shutting the War Prism down and will buy some time now. While Hellraiser will not be able to warp in reinforcements. Gives Clem a few moments to recover. 10 workers down. It's definitely recoverable. I mean, you've got Ordals and Mules. 10 workers is kind of the advantage of Protoss kind of wants to be. And obviously, Hellraiser took some damage beforehand as well. And... You know, he's cut SCV production too to be able to keep on being so aggressive and warping in so many zealots. These zealots now, I mean, imagine this with six more zealots with this. This actually might be really dangerous for Clem, but as it stands, and that's that's why that war prism shutdown was huge, because if that was six more zealots, that could have been absolutely deadly already, which is just ridiculous how it could have already been so deadly. All right, well, we are going to see Vikings and Marines hanging out in the natural expansion, and... Just going to be seeing that medevac coming over as well for Clem. Here we go, Zelts. Out through the center of the map. More of these, well, another war prism down the left-hand side. He's got stalkers inside. That's going to be dropping into the main base shortly. So war prism heading down to the bottom side. And thinking about maybe heading in towards the main again. Another few of these Zelts, though. Can't take everything into the main base at the same time, so... Just going to protect up into that blink as well, making the stalkers a bit more useful. Forge and the Temple Archives, you can see that Hellraiser knows this game just isn't going to end on the current set of units, so he can improve the units that he has, and he's going to tech up in towards the Temple Archives at the same time. And Stimpak just a few moments away from finishing here from Clem, so he will get himself up into a pretty good setup to kind of continue through. Seven workers down again, it's still very manageable for Terran. You can see how Rose isn't mining too much more than Clem at the moment, despite that seven or six, six or seven worker lead. In terms of resources lost, it's pretty even. So all said and done. Again, very playable for Clem as how Rose will take the third Nexus already. No sign of a third CC from Clem. Or the fourth and fifth Rax. I mean, he's just not at that stage yet. Obviously, with how hectic and crazy everything was so far, 
the idea of moving in towards your next set of minerals, that or kind of you know, next clump of minerals, which is either going to be fourth or fifth racks or third CC, that's very delayed from where we'd expect it to be. So expect that maybe in the next minute, minute and a half or so. But uh, not just yet. As for now, Clan really just pumping out units, getting plus one attack and combat shields done, so you can go for a bit of a bio fight. Got some tanks to support this and the medivacs as well, so as he lifts this tank up, here we go. A few minutes already stepping forward, forces the blink back on the stalkers now. And it's Clan pushing across the map to try and achieve something here. Marines continue to stem in after those stalkers, hunting those down. Blinking over the left side, another Marine that was just scouting gets shut down, and Clem is going to find himself with tanks in this very good position. Those Zelts aren't able to charge on top of them. They have to come all the way around the side, and that's a very painful little situation. I wonder if there's going to be a widow mine swap as well now, you know, start building widow mines instead of tanks, because it's at that stage where there's so many Zelts that widow mines will just do so much better than the siege tanks. The Marine's going to use those tanks to kind of buffer for them a little bit to absorb some of the damage. The Marine's kind of in the way, but there's just so many Zealots here. Tell you what though, the Siege Tanks are able to get a lot of the High Templar kills, and that is pretty huge. Now these Zealots are kind of fighting on their own, no threat of storms. These Marines are able to kind of fight back very easily, and, well, these Marines actually trade very well in the end. Again, those tanks killing the High Templars was absolutely crazy effective. Only one High Templar killed, but the other one had to drop its storm. It just wasn't that good of a storm. It wasn't on the Marines, which is what you're aiming for in that fight, I think. The Zealots go down, suddenly these Stalkers are not that tanky. The Sentry dies as well, the High Templar also falls. The Archon might be a step too far, and you have to lift up before the splash damage kills all of those low health marines. A couple of probes killed, a good attack from Clem, gets a lot done, keeps the army supply lead, and he brings Hellraiser down a step as well, also distracts Hellraiser and stops Hellraiser from just being able to keep on probing, has to focus on unit production for a little while there. Marines continue to chase down more of those probes, six of them killed now. A little bit of a drop in the main is nicely done, and Bring these Marines forwards. I think he knew that that medivac was going to fall, so just going to run back around and actually force another warp into the top side. That's really nice because we're running into the third base. Well, didn't mention it, but there's no pylon here, so can't warp in here anyways. And Hellraiser suddenly just lost 17 probes. Playing with some huge plays in the last few moments to continue putting himself into an amazing position so far. There's medivacs lifting up, coming down to the bottom side. A couple of Zelts start chase down after a couple of SCVs. Marines going to stim and go after the Zelts as well. Tank fire. He's going to hit the Zelts, but not quite. He's actually just going to come underneath the Warpers, and that's nice. Good shutdown again. Clem's so good at denying Hellraiser from consistently having something across the map to harass with. So that's a very, that is very, very well done so far. Again, Marines and attack setting up from Clem down on the bottom third base. Can we see this Observer coming across as well, sitting out the front? So that's Storks and the Archon, High Templar 2. All gathering up between the natural and the third. Two more High Templar joining in with this now. Another Immortal as well. I'm scanning to see the saturation of that third. Get a bit of an idea as to what his position is in terms of economy. Resources lost is favoring Clam. He's traded much better by about a thousand resources or more. Maybe 1.5k even. He's traded really well so far as those few Marines. Are loading down on the bottom left hand side. Trying on the way up here from Hellraiser and just going to be seeing the pylon setting up as well. And these actually do come in and they pick off that war prism, so a good little shutdown there. Still some units of Hellraiser pressing down the left side. That medevac is able to boost away though. I mean, it's still just coming in, getting a pylon, getting out of there. It's little bits of damage as Clem builds, it up, builds up at home. Talk about the potential switch into Widow Mines not happening. It is just continued tank production. Armory finishing. Neither player has gotten into 2-2 upgrades yet, but Clem will be the first to do so perhaps. That armory done suggests he is thinking about it, whereas Hellraiser hasn't shown any inclination. Can build them whenever he wants, already has the Twilight Council. Marines loading up, dropping back down on the low ground, and still just seeing a 4th CC from Clem. I mean, really looking comfortable in terms of what he's building at home. And as he sims towards Yale, run straight into some Zards, and he's not going to stick around for that fight. Oh, if the Archon joined in as well. It's just not worth it. There's nothing to really achieve there. Get away, get out of those Stalkers. Doesn't want to lose the Medivac. He might still. Blink is available in a moment and blinking underneath. The medivac will go down. Clem maybe did stick around a bit too long there. Got a few more shots off when he, again, he wasn't really going to achieve anything, but... Well, got to lose the drop sometime, right? Got to make every call perfectly. I was going to see this Medivac coming over to the left. And two more Archons on the way up. 
Let's do attack upgrade as well for Clem. Start as well. We mentioned that switching up into 2 2 with the armory finishing. That's exactly what we're starting to see. This little drop is going to circumvent this army here, so he's going to be able to make a dive up into this mineral line. A few probes already dropping down very quickly, actually. Five probes killed as that cannon dealing some more damage. Medivac loads up, dropping down in towards this natural. A couple of stalkers there, though. Very quick to push the Medivac back again. And load one more time as Solid's and Archon's coming through. The Medivac will be killed off. And that is going to be a cleanup. Nine probes dead, though. Not bad at all for just the one Medivac, right? Not bad at all. Hellraiser building up in the center of the map here and just setting up to come down to the bottom and maybe just try and get a kind of a straight up push going, but I feel like it's going to be tough. Clem has a siege tank line, he has Liberator sieged up as well. DTs are going to make their play now that, now that Dark's trying to finish it. And, well, the scan's available, but there's no turret up at all, so it's going to be a scan in each mineral line. It's going to be not the easiest to deal with. Already seven SCVs have fallen. There's multiple mineral lines that are currently not being dealt with that attack in the main. That's DT here getting quite a lot done. Match on the third DTs go down pretty quick. Now Hellraiser trying to capitalize on a bit of chaos, trying to attack into the front. But it'd be nice to attack in as the DT's first attack, because then obviously you're kind of really distracting Clem at the right time. Now Clem's almost already dealt with the DT threat as that attack came in, and then the attack wasn't able to do anything anyways. Now it's charging through. 19 SCVs lost from Clem. I tell you what, would not like to be in a, wor a worker in these games between Clem and Hellraiser, because it is absolutely a deadly situation. Because of having that tank to keep it alive, and now if Hellraiser finds himself in a cool little spot, up this ramp here, well, Clem has to find his way to attack into a Hellraiser army, otherwise he's going to lose his natural. But he's going to be attacking into Sorbs, so that's a little bit troublesome. Liberator's trying to set up, he's just going to give up the natural position and hold the main and the third with a couple different sets of Liberators. Drops units up into the main as well. It's probably the best way to deal with it, because now he's essentially still attacking or dealing with the army from one front, rather than being split up in two different directions. Loses 36 SCVs, Clem. I'll attack across the map, he actually unloads three full medivacs of units. That could get a lot done. Sees the fourth base just now building as well. Hellraiser does have energy to recall and might have to recall here, but the Nexus, I actually don't think the recall comes in in time. Nexus will go down and, well, Hellraiser just takes it as an opportunity. No, those units came from the third base. He takes it as an opportunity to move down to the third. So he does just come straight down over here, gets a tank on the high ground too. The Bio, though, also taking the chance to come down to the low ground now. A couple of high temple over here. So they have to drop their storms. Spire Force coming in, looking to shut down the fourth base, putting Hellraiser on pretty much zero income because that natural has not got much left on it. It's going to mine out very shortly. Clam is still mining for Clamdry Fortress on this bottom slide. It's a stable position that will help him a lot when it comes to some kind of a base trade. I mean, still, there's not a lot here in this natural, and well, he just used the recall to bring back a couple of Archons. I'm not sure if that's even enough. I think Hellraiser might have miscalculated what he needs to survive this. The Archons go down now. These Stalkers on their own will not trade well enough because the Zelts are also dead. Uh, it's still super close. The army is going to start pushing into that planet before his SCVs will be pulled in to help with this. High Templar's coming back over here. He storms, but I feel like he's going to kill more of his own probes than anything else with those storms. In the end, just drops the feedback too. This attack of Clem is going to be dealt with. Planetary Fortress goes down, but the bio units coming up with the EMP is getting rid of the Archon so quickly on the bottom side. Huge play by Clem, and he is going to clean up the army on the bottom. So big plays there. Clem still has a third orbital alive. He's still got this main orbital to relocate as well, so he will be able to set up more mining if it's only with 19 SEVs. He's killed 17 probes across the map, and Hellraiser on 32 probes, but he doesn't have anywhere to mine from. It's a mined-out main. It's a mined-out natural. So he's essentially got, what, like... 12 plus 4, like 16 workers that aren't mining properly. So this is almost equal economies. Obviously, for the moment, Hellraiser will be ahead because Clem isn't mining properly at all. But when this base is set up, it should even out quite substantially. This has turned into a crazy, crazy set of TVPs between Clem and Hellraiser. What a series. What a pass to free. Still not quite clear who's going to win this out as Hellraiser will make a move to the bottom side. Will make an attempt to attack into this third base. So here we go, first out already charging forwards, Arkham and Stalkers falling through, big storms landing. Now the EMPs will start to come through, he's got one more EMP, hits the Archons in the High Templar with it. Again, there's just not much to buffer for these units, the War Prison goes down, jumps if he gets rid of the Archon, the Stalkers again just don't trade that well against these Bio units. Clem now micro and single units in the Medivac, last few Stalkers going down over here, Hellraiser on four, Army Supply blinking away. 
Again, that micro on the Medivax was huge because otherwise he would have lost too much here, Clem. That is Clem's army, by the way. Three ghosts, three marauders, and a Medivac. There's a Liberator out over here as well that he's not currently using. This is absolutely ridiculous. A single Marine is going to stim fours. Even if it just finds one probe, that would be huge at this stage. Every little bit of mining you can deny is so important right now as this Marine sees no expansion. That's a huge relief for Clem, of course, knowing now that his opponent is barely mining as well. He gets two kills with these pro with this Marine, and he's still kiting away. He will run out of stim. He gets one more probe kill, and that's probes that are also now not mining as well, which is also a huge deal. The Liberator sets up defensively, and Hellraiser is going to be chased away with his stalkers once more. Gets the Medivac at least, and now the damage that he deals is guaranteed and uh, will not be just repaired up by that Medivac. And Clem is not really in a position to afford another Medivac either, so it's a great snipe there by Hellraiser. I'm just worried that Clem is just a little bit too far ahead in army supply to be able to make this work out. And here we go, you can see Hellraiser, I think, realizes that this is pretty much over if Clem mines, so he pulls the boys, he pulls the probes, just to try and end this right here and now, see if it can work out. Probes down at the bottom side, the Stalker as well. All of these Stalkers are actually down at the bottom, and well, here we go. The Probes are trying to tank for the Stalkers. The problem is there's EMPs as well, so the Probes are not going to last very long at all. Hellraiser knows it's over, and Clem will just claw out a 2-0 victory in a ridiculous TVP series here in the Wadi TV European League.